uh, measuring diversity that is more most probably related to the laboratory that you are going to conduct for this uh, topic on community ecology. So we have measuring diversity or species diversity. So there are a lot of um, uh, methodologies that is being used depending on what organism that you are working you are, you, that you are working so iba yung methodology on invertebrates iba yung methodology for for birds iba yung methodology for bats for plants and other mammals for example in other organisms kumbaga. so these are the most or or this uh, presentation are the most of uh, the sampling methods that is being used in ecological studies okay so primarily for biodiversity studies, you have what we so-called modified belt transect. Okay, so a belt transect, for example, um, pinaka minimum niya is a two-kilometer transect that is divided into different points. Okay, so the major points of these two kilometers is divided into 250, so that point zero to point one is 250, and this is divided into subpoints, which is of 50 meters, I know, 50 meters um, uh, distance. So, ginagawa ito, it is because um, there are instances that you cannot finish the 2,000 kilometer transect, especially if you're in a forest area, medyo mahirap. Okay, so depende sa klase ng community na i-assess ninyo, yung facing ng assessment and sampling sa isang area. So, ginagawa yung pagkakaroon ng subpoints para um, pwede mong gawin on the next day yung, yung activities on the sampling. Okay? So, you will have uh, assessment ngayon from 0 to um, point zero a So, that's 50 meters. Ayan. So, kumbaga, ito kasi, pwede kasi itong mahulog na replicates mo. Okay, on your one whole sampling um, area na two kilometer. So this uh, can be considered at replicates and you have sub replicates. Okay, so for statistical purposes. So bell transect. So if you establish a bell transect or transect line, lahat ng madadaanan ng line na to that is being assessed in a particular um, community or particular type of environment. So kung tatanong nyo sa akin, kung Sir, paano mag-establish ng bell transect? Nasa sa inyo yun as researcher. Okay? So, bell transect, as much as possible in a particular area, it should be straight, okay? Heading towards north, okay? Kaya kailangan nyo rin ng GPS, okay? So, um, sa bell transect naman, na ano, na methodology, um, kailangan ng um, ano to uh, depende siya kung kung ang assessment mo ay flora or ang assessment mo ay fauna so applicable din ang modified belt transect kasi kung nagsa something ang animals for example sa animals um sinusundan lang nila yung transect line na ginawa for plants para dun din sila magsa sampling ng kanilang animals Doon sila maghuhuli or magsaspot ng birds. Uh, mag, 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 malapit doon sa transect line sila magsa-establish ng mist nets for their birds and bats. Doon sa malapit sa transect line na yun, doon sila maghahanap ng amphibians, reptiles, and so on and for other animals. Yan. Okay. So sa transect na to, dito din sa mga points na to, for example 0 0.1, dito din nag, nagsa-sampling yung plants. And yung plants meron tinatawag na nested plot method. Kumbaga, in nested plot method, sa isang plot na 20 by 20, dun mo ipapasok yung ibang um, ibang plant species classified as understory and the ground cover. So, itong upper canopy, ito na yung large trees. Mahirap naman kung 10 by 10, masyadong maliit yun for upper canopy. So, yung kanina sa belt transect, if you have a plot zero or sub uh, point zero, gagawa ka doon ng nested plot. 20 by 20 for large trees, 5 by 5 for understory, and 1 by 1 for ground cover. So, 
itong understory and ground cover should be in inside the 20 by 20. Kaya nga siya tinawag na nested plot method. Okay. Um, aside from being having the square, kasi yan, square na yan, okay, makonsider mo rin to siya na a quadrat method. So isang quadrat, okay, you have the sub-quadrats here. Pwede din. Okay? Yan. So aside from the square, pwede din gamitin yung circular uh, circular plot method. So, kumbaga, hindi siya rectangle or square, siya sang circle. So, circle, nakahatiin mo sa center into four. Okay? Four section. One. So, um, for example, uh, may circle ka dito, gagawa ka ng circle, and then, hatiin mo ito siya into four. So, sub plot one, sub plot two, sub plot three, sub plot four. That is for applications and for statistics, okay? So, dito naman, pwede mo siyang hatiin din to 4, ganyan. Para mas mabilis yung sampling. Napakahaba kasi ng 20 by 20 na plot. So, pwede mo hatiin yun na um, station 1, station 2, station 3 for that particular plot. Okay? So, yung ginawa, ginawa nyo doon sa activity nyo on population dispersion, that is quadrat method. Gumawa kayo ng plots and yung gumawa kayo ng subplots within that particular plot. Pwede naman yung gamitin, but um, masyadong malamilan yung ginawa yung subplots. Medyo mahirap siya. Uh, medyo marami ang consideration. So, pwede yung malaking quadrat na ginawa nyo sa population dispersion, hatihin nyo lang sa core, pwede na yun. Okay? So, you look onto the species that you want to, to work on, then count it. Okay? So, consider the first uh, section as S1 and the next section as S2. Okay. So, for, for animals, meron silang tinatawag na mark, mark recapture method. So, method of population size estimation kasi titingnan kung uh, marami ba sila sa ang isang species sa isang area or konti lang. So, for bats and birds, ginagamit to. So, pag nahuli siya, imamark siya, and then i-release sa wild. At pag um, nahuli siya ulit, may factor yung recapture on the computation of population size and estimation. You will learn much more of, of mark and recapture method if you uh, have or kung meron man sa inyo mag-advanced ecology or, or mag-major ng ecology, um, you will learn a lot more on mark and recapture method. It is not applicable in large population kasi nga, um, there are <coughs> There are instances na um, hindi mo pwede, hindi mo na mare-recapture yon kasi napaka-large ng population. Okay? So this is very applicable to small population estimation. Okay. So sa mark recapture method, estimate density from captures, captures based on the traps or misnetting. Sa so traps that is for rodents, misnetting is for um, um, birds, bats, yan. misnets, harp trap, Harp trap kasi is for insect bats kasi mat mataas yung echolocation capability niya and yung vibrations uh, recep reception. You have also light traps for small mammals, snap traps, pitfall traps, glue traps, so insect light and belted traps for insects, and you have direct capture per plot. So capture rate success for net, uh, this is not for net, this is for traps. So, the number of captures over the total trap nights, okay? Yung ilang nights ka nag, nag, nag set up ng trap. So, number of species over total number of traps, i-compute mo rin yun. So, ilang traps ang ginamit mo? Dalawa, tatlo, marami, yan. Number of individuals over total trap nights, yung number of nights na sinet up mo yung trap. So, one trap set per night is equal to one trap night, Okay? Yan. So, total deployed per night, cumulative siya. So, day 1, day 2, day 3. There are a certain number of trap nights that's required for biodiversity studies. Again, we will discuss that more on um, specialized ecology courses. So, success reflects density of large taxa uh, dependent on deployment and bait. So, 
Depende siya kung anong bait ang ginamit mo, attractive ba siya doon sa rodent or hindi. So kung hindi, most likely you have a lower rate of trap success. Kung ang deployment mo naman, depende sa area na dinadaanan ng rodents. So you should be knowledgeable kung saan most likely madedetermine mo kung saan sila dumadaan. Okay, so hindi lang siya basta-basta nilalagay. So live traps versus snap traps. Sa snap traps kasi, pwedeng mamatay yung ano, and in biodiversity studies, we do not, ano, as much as possible, dapat walang mamamatay kasi we need to have to study them at the same time, we need to release them after we uh, get the data from these animals. Okay. So sa net naman, number of net, cap, number of captures over net nights, ilang nights yon number of species over total net nights, number of individuals over net total net nights or net days for birds and one trap set per night so as much as possible din natin mihan siya so kung gusto niyo matapos lahat agad yung biodiversity studies maraming nets ang inestablish yung ginawa niyo sa ecology parang dalawa lang pero if you are going to in zoology should i say dalawa lang and we're going to have biodiversity studies dapat marami okay para madali kayong matapos kasi there is specific number of net nights required for, again, for biodiversity studies. Harp trap and tunnel traps, ito yung harp traps. Okay? Mahirap establish to eh. This is good. But this is good for capturing insect bats. Kasi nylon yan eh. Medyo hindi, hindi yung vibration reception medyo ma, or vi, yung sending of vibrations medyo mahina kung ito ang ano mo. So, most probably makakapture mo yung uh, insect bat. Bihira lang kasi nakakapture yung insect bat sa mist net. Okay? And you have mist netting for the birds. So, dependent on the net deployment skills, kung saan mo talaga in-establish yung net mo. Okay? So, yung mga gumagawa ng biodiversity studies assigned to birds, alam na nila, may idea sila kung saan nila um, in-establish yun. So these are the assumptions for mark and recapture methods. The mark animals are not affected either in behavior or life expectancy and so on. So most probably hindi naman to masyadong ano. So distance sampling methods. So within the transect, so you can actually observe, for example, if you're working on birds, so you can actually observe that using a binocular and then you can identify the species. Meron naman uh, based on calls. Okay, so they can identify the birds uh, based on calls, so they can record that one. So that is for species richness. Sa plants naman kami, distance sampling pa rin, especially for large trees na hindi na kaya namin kumuha ng sample. Okay, so pag ganun, automatically identify based on the structure of the leaves, yan, ina-identify na namin. Pero for, for medyo mababa or, or um, small trees, kumukuha kami, kami ng samples okay so these are the comparison of population um, magnitude based on the sampling area or the sampling methods that we are going to use and their implications Ayan. so in measuring biological diversity there are different levels you have alpha beta and gamma for alpha these are the number of species okay so species richness for beta diversity you tend to compute now the diversity of the organisms and you try to compare um, different plots, different transects, okay, and you are going to use statistical <coughs> statistical ano, analysis. For gamma diversity, ito ay landscape. Okay, so geographic scale species diversity according to Hunter. So malaking geographical range na ang consideration ng gamma diversity. Or you have already the regional scale. So these are some of um, indices used for alpha diversity. You have um, species diversity or the number of species, or species richness, should I say, or the number of species. Species diversity, richness and relative abundance, evenness. So gano sila ka even in terms of the distribution in the Pacific area. Dominance. What are the dominant species in the area? Endemism, kung sila ba ay endemic or not in the area. And similarity of coefficient, if there are similar, uh, if you're trying to compute or try to compare communities whether they have similar species 
or not, or they had similar composition or relative uh, or species diversity to another um, area. So that is similarity coefficient. So these are some of the basic um, uh, computations, okay, in in um, diversity studies. So you will be doing this one. This is included in your laboratory exercise that will be uploaded in Google Classroom. So this is already self-explanatory. And so what are the data that is needed for density, dominance, relative frequency, and of course, the importance value. In diversity indices, one of the main um, formula that is being used is the shannon wehner Index, okay? So the shannon wehner Index if you have the value of Shannon Wiener index na zero, most likely that is the absence of ano, absence of, of diversity. Okay? So ayon. So higher value uh, represents higher diversity for Shannon Wiener. For evenness naman, this value provides you an idea. Um how a particular species is evenly distributed on the sampling area. Okay, so they are localized basila or evenly distributed along with the sampling area that you establish. Localized lang ba siya sa uh, point one or localized lang ba siya in a specific point or a species is well distributed and then just a point one and to the last point of your sampling area. And this is the um formula for evenness. Simpson's index, um, dalawa, um, 1 minus D, since index of dominance for dominant species, and you have um, this particular formula, where right? this is Simpson's index of diversity. Ito naman, my Simpson's index for dominance, and 1 minus D or 1 over D, meron din yung um, interpretation. For comparing coefficient similarity, ayan, uh, pairwise comparison of species composition between sites using both shared and unshared species, tinitinan na nito yung similarities ng species composition ng dalawa, tatlo, or different communities. Yun ang tinitinan niya. I think you will compute this one in your laboratory. Kasi you will be having two different sampling areas or sampling sites. Iko-compare nyo ngayon kung magkapareho or hindi magkapareho based on the value of the computed coefficient similarity which is of this particular formula. Other other way, other statistical um, software used to compare communities are you have the Sorensen and you have the Jacquard similarity index. Ang makikita niyo sa kanya ay clustering. Okay? Clustering ng mga sites na in-examine mo on your um, uh, sampling. Okay? So, site 1 ba ay similar in terms of species composition ng site 2 or site 3? Makikita mo yun doon based kay Sorensen and kay Jacquard similarity index. But in this laboratory, you are going to compute for coefficient of similarity. Species richness is what I have said, the number of species. Ang biodiversity studies ay, ay magsastop in a specific area pag na-reach niya ang tinatawag na um, yung plateau. So, ibig sabihin, in your assessment, one day to another day, yan, pag na-reach mo na yung plateau na yan, ibig sabihin, wala nang nadadagdag na number of species, pare-pareho na lang. So, most likely, that constitutes um, to, or that particular number of species constitutes to, yun lang makikita mismo sa isang community na um, uh, in-examine mo. So, species accumulation curve ang tawag. So, species effort curve. So, so, sampling mo sa first day up to the second day, tumaas. But after second day, wala nang nadadagdag. So, stop mo na. Kasi yun na yung number of species na meron ang community na yun. Edge effect, ito yung sinasabi ko na uh, there are instances that the boundaries between two types of ecosystem, for, for example, you have terrestrial and aquatic, medyo maraming maraming species ang nakatira dito. Yun yung edge effect. So, mix of tolerant and intolerant and non-forest colonizing species, agroforest and selective log forest and forest edges. Maraming species doon. <coughs> so, high richness but species composition considers endemism. Okay? 
So, in terms of endemism, yan. So, endemism increases with increasing elevation. So, nandiyan yung tinatawag na altitudinal effects. Kung minsan, um, tinitingnan mo yung variations ng composition ng species based on altitude. So, you have, kung gagawa ka ng altitudinal studies or different uh, variations of species composition in different altitude, gagawa ka ng range ng altitude from zero, for example, zero to to 100 MASL or meters above sea level, anong composition? 100 to 200, anong composition? So what you will see is, um, we will, you will try to check if there is difference in terms of species composition pag tumataas ka in terms of altitude, okay? Or tumataas yung altitude mo, okay? Tumataas ba yung diversity or number of species? Yung, yung how to check altitudinal effects, okay? The birds, small mammals, bats, or pitofauna, annelids, crabs, and most like young indicator species. Ayan. Ayan. So, change in species composition with nutrition around 1,000 MASL. So, yung sinabi ko kanina, 0 to 100, most likely, napakaliit na difference na yun. So, most of the studies na kinakonduct, you have 1,000 MASL na difference. So, 0 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000. Titignan nila yun. Okay? So, you have highland and lowland taxa. So for endemism, at you check mo naman ang endemism, if we try to check the species in IUCN or the International Union for Conservation of Nature, nandun yung endemism category niya. Okay? There are different levels of um, endemism. Local endemism, for example, that is uh, Mindanao endemic, Luzon endemic, or Visayas endemic, uh, Philippine endemic, yan, or Southeast Asia endemic, so, there are different levels of endemism. And talking about endemism, ito yung dahilan kung bakit napataas ang diversity or endemic endemism rate sa Southeast Asia. It's because of um, the invisible lines that is somewhat um, used in order uh, to explain high diversity Kasi daw nga, na-isolate yung mga islands ng different countries in Southeast Asia because of this particular invisible barrier. So, tinawag nila itong mga lines based on the person who discovers the line or the barrier. <coughs> as you can see, or as you have discussed in your other subjects, that isolation mechanism creates or helps in the process of speciation. So, kailangan, dahil, uh, because of this uh, invisible barrier, may kakaroon ng endemic species ang different islands na napapaloob sa mga lines na to. This particular um, um, invisible line is actually discussed in biogeography and evolutionary biology. Okay? So ito lang yung some of the reasons bakit mataas ang endemism rate and biodiversity ng mga islands in Southeast Asia.